How do you know your rack is working? Or do you really know how it works? You probably already saw lots of videos teaching you how to build a rack system. But those videos probably didn't talk much about evaluation like these. Right? A typical rack framework includes retrieval and generation. You may have seen some examples evaluating these parts, such as recall and precision. Prioritizing which metrics to use and setting benchmarks depend a lot on your data and the type of app you're building. A code generation app would use different metrics than a translation app. A recent paper by Microsoft also talked about the challenges in setting benchmarks. And even after fixing benchmarks, the next problem you'll probably run into is the high testing costs. One team had to stop automated testing because it was already too expensive. So now you probably see how complicated this topic can be. Evaluation is not just choosing the right metrics and benchmarks, but also about considering the potential trade-offs in decision making especially when latency and cost can largely impact your business. Even if there are still lots of unknowns in this space, we can still get a feel of what it's like to add a checking step to our RAG pipeline. I'll be walking through the notebook developed by LaneChain, where they implemented ideas from a recent study on corrective RAG. So what is this research about? You probably learned that RAG can generally be complementary to LLMs in terms of reducing hallucinations. However, RAG is not guaranteed to get the answer right all the time. Especially if the first step of finding information goes wrong, you'll end up getting the garbage in, garbage out effect. Let's say all retrieved documents are far from being relevant to the user's question, then it's probably better not to use that information at all for making a response. In this research, they added a step to assess how useful the found information is for answering the question by assigning a confidence score to each information retrieved. There are also other details into the design of the pipeline, but for now, I just want to get across the bigger idea of adding an evaluation component in the retrieval process. So when we go back to the outline, you can see that grade is being added to assess the quality of the retrieved documents before going into response generation, which reflects the retrieval evaluator and the paper. You probably also noticed that the components in the rack system are represented as nodes. This is because we are using Lane Graph, which manages agent workflows in a graph structure. Nodes can represent agents or steps in the pipeline, and edges can represent the direction of the traffic. So what happens next after grading? You'll later see in a notebook that documents are labeled either relevant or not relevant. For any information that is considered irrelevant, the original question will be improved, augmented with information from the internet and finally go into the generation process. Now with an overview in mind, we can start running the code. First, we need to create our knowledge base. I'm going to use three blog posts on knowledge graphs and large language models as the knowledge base. Then we will chunk the text and convert them into embeddings. Please note that the chunk size is arbitrarily set at 500 here, but you should customize or find out the optimal chunk size for a use case. Why is this important? A smaller chunk size can return a more granular response, but the trade-off would be that your system lose the broader context. Next, we have the graph state class, and we'll be instantiating it later. This is a dictionary that will store all of the rack components we saw in the roadmap. But before that happens, let's take a deeper look at how each component is defined. First, we have the retrieve function, which is very similar to what you can find in many RAC applications, as it selects relevant documents through vector similarity search. Then we have grade documents, where a typical prompt acts as the evaluator. The prompt may look loose to you, as there's still room for the definition of what relevance means here. But the main point is to give you an overview of the process of filtering irrelevant information. It is actually specified in the prompt that it's not intended to be a strict test. Let's move on to the next one. Transform query will be triggered when the retrieved document is not good enough. Then we have web search to add additional information to the existing knowledge base. In the corrective rack research, Google search API was used for web search, and the authors did highlight the concern of incorrect information in web searches. So let's keep in mind the importance of factual accuracy in LLM-based systems. Finally, we have the decision and generate functions that tells us which direction the pipeline is heading for. Okay, we can finally build a graph and test how it feels like. So our first question is, why can knowledge graph-based systems improve factual accuracy compared to those without knowledge graphs? 
and looks like there isn't any document that is irrelevant. Let's see what response it gives us. Precise and structured data representations. Unlike LLMs that are optimized for creativity and abstract representation of information, store facts. I think this is a pretty decent answer. What do you think? Let's move on to the second question. This time, my question is more specific about the blog post. This is the blog post that I'm referring to. This post mainly talks about how AI can seem to search faster, but not necessarily more effective for you because the information may not be grounded with facts. And it uses Jason Pargen's frustrating experience on Google trying to fix a Wi-Fi issue on his iPhone. So let's see how it performs. It made a decision to transform the query because some documents were not relevant. And let's see how the answer looks like. First half of the answer looks pretty accurate and relevant to what we found in the blog post, as you can see in the first paragraph. Now let's look at the rest of the answer. This part is correct. You can literally find it here. And the final part is also true. However, if we go back to our question, we asked specifically about the challenge that Jason Pargen faced. Even though the second half pretty much originates from some of the text in the blog post, that is not relevant to our question. There's also one other point. Even if it's true that AI search tools can probably help Jason Pargen, you have found that this is not the conclusion. In fact, there's a transition here where Jerome further elaborated that AI search is not necessarily the solution here. Because there's lots of misinformation on the internet, these LLMs are simply navigating those sources of misinformation and give you something that may not be helpful for you. So what could go wrong here? Well, one possibility is that relevance was not properly defined during the grading process. This leaves room for the model to interpret relevance as whatever it thinks it is. And in the corrective wrap paper, they did emphasize that fine-tuning a retrieval evaluator is necessary. And I hope this gives you more ideas on how you should carefully design evaluator for any LLM-based app that you're building. This is pretty much it for a video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.